on this edition of Titans All Access. We are going to get loud and find out the story behind the Titans 2020 theme song. Jayon Brown is getting better with age. And he explains in this week's Nissan Insider. Coach Dave McGinnis goes beneath the surface to reveal the true story about why the Titans goal line defense is so outstanding. And we are 100% ready to hit the road for Baltimore. So get loud, be proud, and tighten up. Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derek Henry, sack! The John Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith, and we are diving right back in. Had a few days off. Yep. Ready to go. Let's bring the GM up. John Robinson and the Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report as we are ready to go to Baltimore. John, thanks for joining us. Yeah, good to see you, Mike. Good to see you, Amy. All right, so let's talk first about these Ravens. We saw them 10 months ago in January. How are the Ravens of November different than the Ravens of last January? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty similar, Mike. I mean, they, they've got play, playmakers on, on both sides of the ball offensively. It's, it's, it's a really explosive attacking unit. You know, Coach Harbaugh is deeply rooted in special teams, so that's a phase of the game that, that they put a premium on. Defensively, it's attacking. They've added some pieces, you know, both in free agency and via the draft that are helping them. How have Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens offense really evolved in 2020? Yeah, they're they're doing a lot of the same stuff, um, you know, with with the zone read stuff, some of the option stuff. You know, they're they're still throwing the ball down the field. They got a pretty potent running attack. I think they're second in the league in yards rushing. It's a big offensive line that tries to lean on you. And then Lamar, you know, he's he's so explosive with the ball in his hands. He can take the ball and and, and when a play breaks down or if, if guys are covered, he can take off running and go the distance at any time. The Ravens have an outstanding kicker in Justin Tucker, a veteran punter who's done a great job in Sam Cooke. So how do the Titans create winning field position situations when you face a team that kicks it as well as the Ravens do? Yeah, you're right, Mike. The, the, both of those guys are, are, are outstanding. You know, Tuck, Tucker's a Hall of Fame player, and as I alluded to earlier, Coach Harbaugh really puts an emphasis in the kicking game because that's his background. We got to play fast and aggressive. You know, we got we got to get down the field. We got to cover these kicks. Duvernay, rookie, is, is is a really good returner. He's fast. He's strong. So we got to get off blocks and, and, and get him on the ground. We've got to protect. We got to protect the punter. We got to protect our kicker much better than we did last week. Now, Titans Ravens games typically come down to two things. Who wins the turnover battle and who's more successful on third down, both on offense and defense? Is there anything that we should expect to see differently on Sunday from the Tennessee Titans? Well, I think those are those are certainly going to be, um, you know, primary keys for us is uh, staying on the field offensively on third down, making the necessary yardage to keep drives alive, to get the ball down in the red zone scoring touchdowns uh, in the red zone, taking care of the football. Defensively, it's about creating turnovers. You know, we've been pretty good at that this year. We've got to continue that. We've got to get off the field on third down so that we can give our offense some more chances to score. John, great stuff as usual. Thanks for the time. Great seeing you guys. Thank you. All right, John Robinson with the Farm Bureau Insurance scouting report on this week's opponent, the Baltimore Ravens. Right around the corner, Coach Dave McGinnis is going to go beneath the surface for us. But earlier this week, Amy and I had the pleasure of announcing the three finalists in each classification for the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards for 2020. So on December 8th, they'll all come here to Nissan Stadium and be part of what will be a great luncheon and award celebration. On this edition of Titans All Access, we want to show you the finalists. So let's start in Division I, classes A, AA, and AAA. Hunter Frame, South Pittsburgh. Kyler Parker, Moore County. Jared Stone, South Pittsburgh. Class 2A, Kalik Ganaway, Peabody. Will Meadows, Meigs County. Luke Myers, South Green. In Class 3A, Anthony Brown, Milan. Gray Carroll, Alcoa. Martino Owens, Pearl Cone. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. 
Today, we're going to look at a, a tremendous goal line stand in the third quarter by the Tennessee Titans with the Indianapolis Colts getting four shots from the five yard line and not being able to get in. First play we're going to look at is first and goal at the Tennessee 5, 909 left in the third quarter. The Colts are going no huddle as they've been doing all the game. We're in 11 personnel, tight bunch, throws a slant flat to the backside. Great, great pursuit outside. You can see the Titans on the five yard line. They're playing zone defense now. And as this zone defense expands underneath, you've got to keep leverage and then be able to make spot tackles. Beautiful spot tackle out here on the outside by Malcolm Butler. Second and four, and here's what you're going to get. This is a touch pass. It's jet motion, touch pass. Watch Jack Crawford. This is a tremendous play by a down defensive lineman on this play. Uses his hands, shock and shed, and then knocks Heim sideways in this play to keep him from getting in. It was originally called a touchdown by the side judge on the pylon. Under further review, it was deemed he was short, which is the correct call. So now we're third and one at the plus one. Now we are going to get a lead U. The U being the second tight end coming across the formation in the 12 personnel trying to be the lead blocker. Watch Tennessee Titans up front set great up front wedges and then watch Kenny Vaccaro set an edge on the outside. The down defensive lineman wedged up inside, knocked the offensive line back and then watch Kenny Vaccaro set a beautiful edge and then everybody swarms on the swarm tackle. Big, big play. Frank Reich decides to go for it on fourth and one. Here we go. You get motion. Now this is a backside inside zone and the Tennessee Titans do a tremendous job. Watch the leverage, watch the pad level of all the defensive front. Watch them knock them back. And then Rashawn Evans as the middle linebacker slips behind the center trying to block him and then makes a real stout tackle. Fourth and one, big stop, huge goal line stand by the Tennessee Titans defense in this ball game. Later in Titans All Access, linebacker Jayon Brown sits down with Mike Keith for this week's Nissan Insider. But up next, the story behind the Titans' new theme song, Get Loud. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio. Amy Wells, Mike Keith. And if you're a Titans fan, you have probably heard the Titans' new anthem, Get Loud. It's awfully good. And the rest of Titans Nation is catching on all over the world to get loud and what it's all about. Let's meet the two guys who wrote it. And I'm talking about Brandon Ray and Christian Hale, and they form the group Outskirts. They're here right now. There they are. Hey. <laughs> What's up? What's happening? Brandon and Christian, we are so glad that you guys are here. Thanks for taking some time to talk with us. Hey, thanks for having us. We're glad to be here. Christian. I guess I should direct this question at you. Did you and Brandon start off with the idea of wanting to write a Titans anthem, or did it just kind of happen? Uh, the answer might be a little bit of both. I'm actually going to pivot that question to Brandon because a little bit of the backstory, the lyric dates years before we ever got together to uh, write this song. So flashback six or seven years ago, uh, I was on tour. I you know play a lot of shows and everything, and. Uh, who she is my wife now we were actually passing nissan stadium heading toward uh illinois and she said man you should write a song called get loud like for the stadium you know because you always see on the board it says get loud make some noise and this opportunity came up i was like this is perfect we should write it now there there's almost some marching band in get loud you could almost it's, it's got a feel where does that come from and how did you incorporate that brandon i'll give you the first crack oh no well We'll give Christian the crack. But we really wanted to uh, just create something that was anthemic and something that just felt like football, something that would get a crowd full of 65,000 people in a stadium really amped up. So on a production level, we set out to do that and we thought it would be fun to incorporate uh, elements of drumline and marching band and uh, some of those fun things with the intent to create this anthemic uh, sort of stadium-like atmosphere in the track. And it must be so cool for you guys as musicians to hear your songs different places. You said they played on NFL Network and places like that. But as football fans, how cool is it to have an anthem that represents not only an NFL team, 
but Nashville's NFL team, Tennessee's NFL team. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. I've been, I've been a football fan ever since before I could even walk. We're just thankful to be a part of it. Okay, let's show the video. How about that? Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to do my best disc jockey voice. Oh, Are you ready? No. Brandon, Christian, outskirts, here it is. Get loud, everybody. Tighten up. Get you going, doesn't it? Oh my God! Get you I'm going. Fired up. Yep. Brandon Ray, Christian Hale, Outskirts. Thanks for what you've done, and thanks for joining us on Titans All Access. Oh, hey! Thanks for having us, guys, and thanks for playing the video. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon for sure. Jayon Brown is on deck. He's our Nissan Insider. But first, time to look at more of the Tennessee Titans 2020 Mr. Football finalist as we take you to break. Troy Parker Hughes, Elizabethton, Rivers Hunt, Hardin County, Bryson Rollins, Elizabethton. Caleb Fortner, Knoxville Central, Prince Colley, David Crockett, Destin Wade, Summit, Class 6A, Jake Brininstool, Ravenwood, Jalen Hunt, McMinn County, CJ Taylor, Warren County. Welcome back to Titans All Access. It's time for the Nissan Insider. And this week, Mike Keith had a chance to catch up with linebacker Jayon Brown. Now, Jayon is 25 years old, but in football years, well, he's kind of an old man. Don't know how to quit, don't know how to not, don't know how to sit, don't know how to fly, don't know how to miss, just know I'm on top, and you on the bench, don't know how to fold, you know what this is, I'm going for gold, throwing a brick, and I'm about to pop, and you only wish, I'm calling my shot, and here it goes, don't know how to stop. Jayon Brown, what's it like to be one of the old guys now? Man, it, it <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm used to it, I guess, year four. Still young, but but old on the team. This is me in my fourth year, and I'm embracing it. <laughs> I got you with that one. Have you had an old guy moment yet with any of the rookies where you thought, oh, gosh? I wouldn't say an old guy moment, but just knowing what to expect and see guys dealing with certain stuff at, uh, at practice and through this football process, just knowing that that you have that that knowledge of being, of being going through that experience first, second year, even third year, that I can uh, give my knowledge to, to help a younger guy out. 
Okay, so now I've teased you a little bit about that, but the serious part is, Wesley Woodyard was such a big part of your room and a big part of your football life, and I know you think the world of him to this day. Jarrell Casey was a leader, Logan Ryan was a leader. Now that you are one of the more veteran players on the defense, it's changed for you. Have you sensed that you needed to take more of a leadership role because of the absence of those players? A hundred percent. We got we got uh, you know good good leaders and captains on our team with uh, Daquan and Kevin Bayard. But as a group of veteran dudes like like myself, like Kenny Vaccaro, like Rashawn Evans as well, we just got to come together and and just hold ourselves to a high standard and be vocal. But yeah, for myself personally, me calling being a play caller, I got to be a vocal person. No matter how tough it is on the field out there, whatever situation we're in, to just help everybody like stay stay calm, collected, and just do our job and go out there and, and, and play ball. We're right at that sort of getting to that midway part of the season. I want to ask you, do you have a favorite moment of the season so far? Against uh, Houston, uh, just seeing our offense dominate and come up in a, in a clutch victory drive to bring us home in uh, overtime, that, that was definitely a, a real fun moment and uh, a really good team win. And I'm loving it each by week and just letting it all soak in. As you head down the stretch of the season, what does Jayon Brown need to do to make it a really successful season for you individually? I just just keep doing my job and, uh, and doing my part in this defense and, and being a play caller, being a playmaker and getting dudes lined up and keep being a, a, a role leader on this team to just help lead us to victory. Sounds like you're describing an old dude. Oh, man. <laughs> year four, man, year four. It came up fast, came up fast. Well, keep doing what you're doing. We're proud of you, and we appreciate you, Jayon. Thank you so much. As we head to break, here's a look at some more Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award finalists. In Division Two, John Lewis, DCA. Aaron Smith, Jackson Christian. Griffin Swanee. Davidson Academy, Double A, James Dunn, CAK, Langston Patterson, CPA, Dietrich Pennington, ECS. In Division II, Class AAA, BJ Harris, Macaulay, Dallin Hayden, CBHS, Christian Brothers, DC Tabscott, Father Ryan. And our Kicker of the Year finalists, Tegan Lendering, Brentwood Academy, Trey Turk, Oakland, Connor Wood, Lexington. On the next Titans All Access, Derrick Henry like you've never seen him before. The NFL rushing champion talks with Mike Keith about family, fatherhood, fame, and even about his awesome new Old Spice commercial. Derrick Henry and a very special Nissan Insider. Plus, we prepare you for the rematch with Indy, and you will be ready. All of that and so much more on the next Titans All Access. How would you like to work in the NFL? I sure would. You already do. Oh, yes. But many people would like to work in the NFL, even if they don't want to work on the football end of the organization. There are lots of jobs in professional sports, and the Tennessee Titans show those jobs through a learning lab every year where you find out about it finance, you find out about internet, you find out about business and marketing, being part of the grounds crew, all different sorts of things. Thousands of kids have come here to Nissan Stadium to Titans Learning Lab events. This year, couldn't do thousands of kids. No. But this past Wednesday, we did a virtual Titans Learning Lab where youngsters heard about all of the jobs that are non-football for a football team. So, you know, I think Amy at the top said something interesting about her journey that it really was about learning how to communicate and tell stories. And really that's what marketing is about as well. We have meetings weekly and sometimes daily where we meet with our video team, our sponsorship team, our community team, Amy, everybody in between and see what we have planned for the week, what new ideas that we have. I think anything that kind of really builds that skill set related to anything business operations, uh, you know, communications, public relations, marketing, management, all of those things are really helpful. But I think, you know, as a hiring manager now, a lot of what I look at is um, their experience and their references and the recommendations that we get. 
Wish there had been a learning lab with an NFL team when I was a kid. Yeah, maybe you'd have a job with an NFL yeah, team. Maybe. Yeah, that would be that nice. That could be the case. <laughs> well, Mike, since you actually do work for an NFL team. Yes. Let's talk about your keys to beating the Baltimore Ravens. It's about management. Okay. See how I'm working in that marketing thing yes, about good. management? First of all, it's about managing Wink Martindale. And I'm not talking about the Jackson native who went on to fame and fortune as a game show host. No, I'm talking about Don Wink Martindale, the defensive coordinator from the Baltimore Ravens. In January, the Titans managed him, ran the ball, stayed under control, and the defense for the Ravens didn't dominate the game. You've got to manage Wink Martindale. All right, Mike, give me another key. Manage Lamar Jackson. Okay. You got to keep him out of the end zone. You got to keep him from big plays. That is a key in this ball game. Manage Lamar Jackson. What else do the Titans have to manage to beat the Ravens? 60 minutes. You've got to come out in the first minute and be ready to go. This group wants to beat you badly because of what happened last January. When the Titans won in the AFC Divisional Round, they managed the 60 minutes all the way through. That's what they have to do again. This weekend in Baltimore is about management. This is going to be a fun one in Baltimore. It certainly is, and we'll be there for a 12.02 Central Time kickoff on the air on Titans Radio at 11 Central with Titans Countdown, Amy Wells, the crew, and me, Mike Key. So, for Amy, I'm Mike. Glad to be working in the NFL, and we'll see you next time.